Good morning, traders. Today is Wednesday, January 26th, and my name is Charles. This is the Pirate Traders live stream. All right. Well, the market's going to open here in just a minute, so I'll keep it short and sweet here this morning. We do have a gap higher, so the first thing we're going to be watching is for a potential gap and go. That is the market pushing its way um, back down to yesterday's high and either finding support at yesterday's high and getting continuation higher or finding support somewhere between where it opens in that high. Either way, that is considered bullish and we'd be looking for continuation to the upside. That being said, my spidey senses tell me that that's not what's going to happen today. Um, obviously, I'm just guessing here, but... Um, it feels like this is a balancing area and that we may be looking at a balancing area high right in here. Uh, we could probably even just call it yesterday's high. So if the market does trade back down you know, into yesterday's range, I will very comfortably jump into a short at least to get down here to where the overnight POC is as a potential look above and fail of a balancing area. And I also just think it's more likely that the market is just going to kind of rotate around. Uh, we may explore some higher prices, but even then I think we pull back down and kind of grind around in here uh, until 2 p.m. when those FOMC notes come out. I think a lot of people are waiting to hear what they say. And uh, the last few times we've had it, we've had in insane spikes. Um so for those of you that are not members of the private stream, I have some exciting news for you today. Life changing, life altering news. All right. So we got a gap. So the first thing we're watching for is the gap fill. Does the market trade down to yesterday's high at 4403? And if it does, does it find support? If it finds support, it's bullish for continuation. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. Um, but I got exciting news for those of you that are not members of the brigade today and today only. You get to enjoy the pirate during the FOMC. So I'm going to, in an hour, I'm going to cut off and go back to the private stream like I normally do. But then at 2 p.m., I'll be back here live with all of you watching the market go nuts this afternoon and just cracking jokes and hanging out. So you're all welcome to come back and join at 2 p.m. if you'd like to watch the Fed chair speak with me. Good morning, Philip, the Shaw in the house. Cyrus is here. Cyrus overthought my short entry and missed it. Well, if you're shorting for the gap, Phil, you've, you've got plenty of time, my friend. There's still a couple points to be had. Nor Auto Trader, good morning to you. Steven in the house, good to see you. Please smash that like button. P -p -p Please. John is here, good morning, John. Jose is with us, good to see you. J Trader in the house, Sanju back with a scooball, Amir. Van Gilder. Good morning to you. Welcome. David Glass in the house. Is David V in the house? Where are you at, David V? I know you're here. Diego, good to see you. All right, so that's the gap fill. So now that the gap is filled, do we start to bring in buyers? Do we start to bring in some support? Oh, man, the, we need to pull back a little more just for the uh, overnight inventory. Little, we need a little more counter auction, I would think. But let's watch. So Charles, why do you say that? You feel like it needs more of a counter auction. It's at it's at yesterday's high. It could find support here. Just because the ticks were above the uh, thousand level, 
Uh, I've never seen the, the tick start above 1,000 and stay above it all day. They usually need to pull back in towards the zero line, at least a little bit. They don't have to make it all the way back down, but absorb this move a little bit. Okay, so now we're back down into yesterday's range. Uh, next major support is going to be this area around the uh, the two POCs from the overnights. So we could call that 43.66 to like really kind of this whole area. So let's say to like 60. But really we could find support anywhere in here. Let's jump over and see how the queue opened. Okay, so very similar to the ES, it looks like it's starting to develop a balancing area. If you don't know about balancing areas, the way they work is you go from one end to the other. And when you look above one and you come back in, it's a very potent signal. It doesn't happen immediately. It's not like a sell-off. But just by the end of the day, the market will have made its way lower. That's just how it does. Constantly working from one end of balance to the other. All right, market absorbing that overnight inventory. So far, it's kind of bullish. They're creating some support up here. Can they hold it? Design not morning, you dogs. You like dags? What's that? Dags, you like dags? Oh, dogs. You mean, do we like dogs? Sure, we like dogs, Turkish. Mick Stockster in the house. Yo, yo. Mark back with us. Morning. Big Ray. Good to see you. Welcome. Cotton Dog. Believer in 80% rule, Charles. Did that happen yesterday? I think I asked before, but can't hurt to review. Yeah, I don't believe in the 80% rule uh, because Jim Dalton doesn't teach it anymore. So the reason he stopped teaching it was because he noticed it didn't work um, consistently. Um, I can't even remember exactly what the 80% rule is. So, nope, nothing I look at. CCT, are you shorting, Charles? It's a great question. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about my trades, but I will just say, if they don't get back above yesterday's high, pretty soon here. I mean, they are bringing in support, right? We saw the ticks pulled back. They absorbed the overnight activity. And now the buyers are starting to step in, pushing them back up towards that thousand line. 
Okay, so right now there are buyers in this market. You don't want to be a seller. But uh, if they can't get back above yesterday's high, they're going to come back down into this range. It's only a matter of time. Uh, even though the ticks look bullish. That was a good Charles. MK, what benefits do I get if I join your group? Well, what a great question, MK. Um, you get to hang out with me all day and live stream. You get to be in the, the Brigade um, Discord group, which is a great place to share ideas and uh, get perspective from other traders. Uh, yeah, and you just get to listen to my voice talking all day, every day. I mean, it's it's great. Uh, McStockster, yeah, so they're asking about the, uh, the 80% rule. I think Cotton Dog explains it here. Let me just read through. 80% rule is the first one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so let's expand out yesterday's profile. Obviously, the value area was kind of moving around and changing a little bit yesterday, but it was pretty much in this area. Um, so the 80% rule is if you open above balance, then two periods back in balance will go to the other. Oh, so it's talking about the previous day. Well, then we didn't get the. Uh, we opened above yesterday. We spent two time frames inside, but we didn't rotate to the opposite end. So the 80% rule didn't work yesterday. <laughs> uh, probably why Dalton doesn't teach it anymore. Lamus, good morning to you. J Trader, that's another thing. Yeah, if you join the brigade, you can get access to watching the market profile uh, through my charts, which cost a lot of money. So you save yourself, you know, four or five hundred bucks by paying ten bucks. But of course, I'm in control of the chart, so you don't have control, which sucks, but still a bonus. Greg H. Is Jay Dalton your mentor? Yes, sir. I learned pretty much everything I talk about here, either from uh, Jim Dalton or from Peter Reznicek at Shadow Trader. I mean, of course, there's tons of stuff I've picked up here and there over the years, but uh, mainly what I do is I use market profile to analyze the two-way auction process. And that is pure Jim Dalton. <laughs> David Cooper. David Cooper's bullish on the brigade. It's undervalued. Boy, they are doing a great, like support wise, they're doing a great job of holding this market up. Um, it should have pulled back down further into the range by now. So... There are definitely some bulls buying in here. The question is, when will they run out? Looks like the NQ just pulled its way back down to yesterday's high, but it hasn't filled a gap. Ah, yes, it did. Okay, yeah, so now it's starting to pull down into range. Sweet, sweet, sweet.
MK will keep charts live through all U.S. session. Yeah, that's what I do. So when when this when the first hour here on the public YouTube is done, I switch to a private stream until the market close. Uh, Nunes, I have the full version of Window Trader, and I have the uh, most expensive data, which is two hundred a month. So yeah, I think all in it's like four fifty or something. RK is saying, if you don't want to join the brigade, at least buy a Tri Blend t shirt. There'll be more of those coming soon, too. Boy, this is <laughs> quite an exciting morning so far, huh? Uh, 15 minutes into the day. All right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much as good as finding support at yesterday's high. So it's a little bit bullish here. Just not a ton of momentum for it, but uh, leans more bullish. Well, Ronald, that's my favorite review I've ever gotten. My profits have increased and I am more consistently profitable since joining. Thank you, Charles. Well, you are welcome. Scooball, no, no, I haven't made that decision yet to switch up my setup. Chitting these boys looking for a gap and go or something. They're sure trying. They're trying to do it. MK, do you use book map or depth also? Nope. What you see on the screen is what I look at. It's pretty much just market profile, and then I occasionally click back just to see what's happening with the internals, um, which are bullish. All right, well, I'm switching bullish here as long as we stay above this node of support we just created right in here. So if we trade back below uh, 4398, I'll be looking for the market to pull back down, like I said, into this area like uh, 58. But if they can hold it above this node right here, they can get some continuation to the upside, even though they don't have a ton of momentum right now. Um what little momentum there is, is to the upside. All 
Uh, Lamus IQ costs 200 At least for me. It's different pricing for different people, too. That's what's annoying. If you if you sign up for it through a brokerage, you can get different deals and stuff like that. I hate that this business operates like that. Jitten can't wait to get my free T-shirt. <laughs> you got it, brother. Uh, I just I realized this morning, like it was one of the first thoughts that popped in my head when I woke up. I was like, oh shit, I didn't write down what levels he mentioned. Do you remember what the levels were, so I can write them down on a piece of paper? For our wager. Design knob. Everybody's waiting for daddy to speak. Yeah, that's of course why we're getting this lack of volatility here this morning. All the big guns and probably a lot of the small guns too are on the sidelines waiting for 2 p.m. Waiting to hear what daddy says. Is he a dove or is he a hawk? Do we even know how the market would react if he was one or the other? We just got to wait and see. Cotton Dog. Um... I joined another service that does Zoom with no lag and simultaneously on YouTube, which has 15 seconds of lag. That's interesting. Um, well, I'm not a scalper, so 15 seconds don't really matter, in my opinion. What I am talking about now will still be relevant 15 seconds from now, so I'm okay with a little bit of delay. Greg H., I value market profile concepts, but apply them to volume. I believe that volume is more meaningful than time. Your thoughts? Volume being more meaningful than time. I've gotten this question before. Like people ask me, if you could have market profile or just volume profile, which would you have? And to me, it just seems like such a silly premise. Like both things are important. Both time, the amount of volume that trades, and what level, all of these things matter. And so you want to have it all, right? Why limit yourself to only looking at volume? Time is also an important thing to consider. Um, the one debate we could get into, which is specifically talking about the point of control. Uh, do you want to have your point of control based on volume or time? That I'm agnostic on. I go based on time because that's what my mentor Jim Dalton does. And so it's the way I've always done it and it works great for me. The POC is my number one most valuable tool in uh, in market profile, so I'm not messing with that. But that being said, there are lots of people in the brigade who trade with the volume point of control, and they prefer it. So I don't I don't have an opinion one way or another about that. But in terms of what's more important of time or volume, I think they're both important. You might as well pay attention to both. Okay, testing that overnight high. Getting a little resistance in there. RK, choppy until fed. <laughs> Design up. When daddy speaks, you listen. Hey, hey. When daddy speaks, you listen. MK, I am looking to join your group. Well, that's awesome, man. We'd be happy to have you. There's a link in the description just below. It only costs 10 bucks. You can cancel any time. So do it. Pay your 10 bucks. Oh, and you get to stay in the Discord for life. So if you sign up for one month and then cancel, you still got a lifelong membership to the Discord. Well, you know what I'm starting to think is, who are these buyers who are buying up here? What do they know that I don't know?
All right, so let's look for support on a pullback down towards this uh, overnight high. It's only a few points down there, but uh, 4424. Do we start to bring in some volume in there? <clears throat> that would be bullish for continuation. To the upside. Jitten, I'm short from 19 with puts. Think we sell down to the 350s? Yeah, I mean, if you're in puts, wait it out. Who knows what kind of volatility could come in this afternoon? MK, I am. And I guess you could say I'm a live streamer. Cotton Dog. Yeah, there's there should always be like a 15 or so second lag. But uh, yeah, that shouldn't. Shouldn't hurt anybody. David V, there you are. I was asking about you earlier, brother. You were late this morning. You slept in. Uh. Dimitri, good morning. There are some ladies in here, too, if you like to party. Amir, it's all retail. Yeah, buying up here, 100%. It's all retail. And I'm just so worried about these people. <laughs> you know? They could be buying the top tick. Mick Stockster, well, we'd love to have you, man. Join on up anytime. Like I said, it's 10 bucks. It's less than one tick on the ES. So if in an entire month I could give you a single trade idea that will make you one tick, it was totally worth it. Uh, Amir, it's all retail buying the dip, my best guess. No, they're not dip buying at this point. This would be FOMO, right? They're afraid the market's going to break out and they don't want to miss the trade. Um, that would be my guess. These are less experienced FOMO traders. But they're right sometimes too. Everybody makes money sometimes. So let's see if they can hold it up here. MK, well, that's tragic. I hate to sound like I'm trying to profit from this man's tragedy, but if you know of a market profile room that needs a, a leader, please send some of your friends my way. Ooh, Jitten, adding to your short? That's risky. You've already got a position.
I'm here, milady. Well, there you go. Nor Auto Trader, only an eight second delay all the way from New York to Norway. Alpha Trader short covering? No, it didn't. did not have a short covering vibe at all. Um, it has been such a slow grind up here. So a short covering rally is going to, it's going to have a, a sense of panic in it. The market's going to be popping higher. It'll pop, pop, pop. It'll just kind of keep jumping, jumping, jumping. That's short covering. Um, this is new buyers who stepped in right at yesterday's high, but there's just not very many of them. So it's like the momentum is to the upside, but there's just very, very little momentum. Low volume as well, although it's kind of hard. This judge is based on the last 10 days, and we've had so much volume the last couple. So that might not be terribly low volume, but they're waiting. They're waiting for that FOMC meeting. Cod ra Cotton Dog Rally trying to front run the Fed rally? Uh, could be. That would make sense. But that's why I made the statement, what do they know that I don't know? Because, like, I literally can't tell you right now. Like, Let's say Jay Powell comes out and he's super hawkish, right? I can't tell you what the market does. I don't know how it reacts. Let's say he comes out and he's still dovish, even more dovish. I don't know how the market reacts. I have no idea. I got to wait and see because it really is kind of random. But these people, they already know. Better than me, I guess. John Q, a broken clock is right twice a day. There you go. As a matter of fact, most traders have a lot of success when they are unexperienced. Because they don't have the psychological burdens that the, those of us who've been through battle have. Uh, they're like, fuck yeah, look at that. The market's going higher. I'm just going to buy it. <laughs> Trader McStockster, you're such a weirdo. Uh, he's like, okay, now that I know there's a delay, I got to know exactly how many seconds. Because if it's like an eight second delay, that's one thing. But if it's 12 seconds, if it's 12 seconds, I'm out of here. Yeah, I don't know where I'd find a clock with seconds. There you go. So is it 10 a.m. and 10.03 and five seconds where you are? Or is it 10.03 and two seconds? Where are we at? Q looks like it's about to uh, start trending higher. There you go. So once again, they got some resistance at the overnight high. Can they get above it?
Cotton Dog, thinking about taking it to four ticks. Um, that's Yes, it'll condense down your profiles quite a bit, but it'll make it a little harder for entries and exits. But if you're looking for that nice, tight profile, that would be the way to do it. But even on the NQ, I'm only in two ticks. So... Nunes, I doubled my account the first two months of trading and then lost 70% in that September correction. Literally everyone I know has that story. <laughs> everyone I know has like, when I first started, it was so easy. I was just making money every day. It was great until something happened and the market changed. And then I gave it all back. I got one of those stories about Bitcoin too. All right, well, this is not bad. Lots of seven and eight second delays. That's pretty good. Cotton dog or at a vertical monitor. Yeah, that's how um, Shadow Trader looks at his profile is in a vertical monitor. Big Ray. The problem I have with my PC is every time I stretch the chart to see the letters, my PC freezes. Yeah, bro, it's definitely time for an upgrade. Treat yourself. Your computer is a tool you use to make a living. You want to have a good one. Sharpen that axe. Did I buy BTC <laughs> at 69K? No, of course not. No, I bought BTC at like 20,000 and then it went down to like 10,000. Uh, actually, it went down to like 6,000 for, for a moment. But no, I'm not buying BTC at 69,000. Uh, I'm a trader. You realize that, right? Uh, I buy low. I sell high. Cotton dogs out. All right, brother. Have a good rest of your day. Off to buy himself a new monitor. Big Ray. I have a 55-inch TV for my monitor. Well, there you go. Yep, it was in 2017. That's when I got started. Scooball, do we still have buyers there? Uh, again, nothing has changed about the way I'm seeing this. The momentum is to the upside, but it's just, there's just no momentum. So I would say the buyers are running out, certainly. Um, It's pretty good taper on the high. 
But I think they can probably get one more little push up there, get a little bit more excess. It's tough to say. Odds are, honestly, guys, it's probably just going to be really boring until 2 p.m. That's the way it was the last two FOMC meetings we had. It was like super boring all day, just grinding around in a really tight, uh, in a really tight range. And then what happens is the FOMC notes come out both times. This is what happened. The market started moving a certain direction, then turned around and went the opposite direction for the rest of the day. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen today. Um, But certainly something to think about. Probably going to be boring for the next couple hours. Big Ray, TPO chart is the only one to give you issues. Is it with Window Trader or is it another 
provider. All right, well, we've clearly run out of buyers, so I'm back to neutral here. I will get bullish again if we can get above this little node right here, 44.33. But for now, I think we need to pull back down and test yesterday's high once again. Looking for support there. Oh, on Ninja Trader. got 111 people watching we got 54 likes if you like the pirate push the thumbs up support the channel you're sitting at home right now and you're thinking fuck you pirate i don't even care i'm not pushing no thumbs up button for you i'm not gonna tell this youtube algorithm to start watching me and what i like here's the thing it would really help the channel that's how the channel grows it's how youtube sends me new viewers if the people that are new here, push that like button. So please do. Scooball, can we assume rotational there? Um, well, technically, no, not yet, right? We're still in the initial balance. But yeah, I mean, this feels pretty rotational, doesn't it? And as I mentioned earlier this morning, if it finds support in here when it comes back down to test it, then we're probably just rotational. But if this breaks, so say 43.98, if we start to get below there, it could cause a liquidation of all these buyers who have been piling in, right? Remember when we were right here, I said, I'm worried these guys are buying the top tick. If, the, if we get back down here, those buyers from up in here, they'll have to exit. They'll panic. And then we'll get a pretty quick pullback. So, yeah, it feels rotational unless that support breaks.
Uh, nor Auto Trader. Are you saying it, will Apple's earnings affect the market? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, they do. Apple moves the market. Only a tiny, tiny little bit, but it does. MK, I don't talk about my trades here on the channel because uh, I find it doesn't really help anybody learn. They just copy me. Um, and they don't think for themselves. So I don't discuss my trades. I'd rather teach you how to fish. David Cooper, it's a great question. So have I thought about dipping my toe back in crypto? No, not really. I, I did a little bit, uh, like probably like three or four months ago. I was kind of like, fuck, should I get back into crypto when it was like really pumping? But uh, followed my better angels. Stick to what I'm good at. Um, but could I look at them in market profile? Yeah, I would have to buy those feeds, right? Like right now I'm only paying for... Um, the ES, the Russell, and the NASDAQ futures. Um, so I'd have to pay more to get those things, but yeah. Keep uh, keep bugging me with it. Maybe one day I'll, I'll decide to give it a try. The only, th the, the one interesting thing though is the thing, the reason that market profile gives me such an edge on the ES is because I didn't learn the patterns of the ES myself. I just learned them from Jim Dalton. Jim Dalton spent 20 plus years watching the market move every single day on this profile. And he learned exactly how the ES moves. Two ticks is good excess, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I don't know, you know, on any random cryptocurrency, what is good excess? You know, what is the average type of volatility you get? What is da 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 da? So the only way to really effectively be able to use the profile on a, uh, on a crypto or an individual stock or anything else is you'd have to put in some time. You'd have to spend a, a month or two just watching the charts every day and learn its patterns. Harry, how do I look for a possible support level to buy? Well, if I was looking to buy today, the support would clearly be yesterday's high, right? We've made good support there this morning. There's no reason why it couldn't act as support again in another push lower. Um, but to answer your question more like in general, how do I look for support and resistance? Um, the two main things I'm looking at, number one is volume, pretty much big nodes of volume. Anywhere you see a big note of volume, there are odds the market will push its way to there and then find either support or resistance there. So volume is the first thing I look at. And then what are called market profile references. So that are things like the high and low of the day, the high and low of the overnight, um, the point of control, the half back, um, each 30 minute time periods, high or low, um, all these kind of like random little levels that you hear me constantly talking about. Those are also potential support and resistance. But it's something you just kind of get a knack for. This is one of those reasons why I say you got to think for yourself. You can't be waiting for me to tell you you can buy the high of yesterday for support um, with a nice tight stop. Like you need to think that thought when the market was up here. When the market was up here, you needed to be saying to yourself, man, it's bullish, but the tempo is so slow. The volume is so low. You know, ugh, I don't want to buy it up here. All right, well, where would I buy it? And then ask yourself, okay, well, 
we found support here the last time. Maybe that's where I'd buy. Right? You gotta you gotta walk yourself through that process in your head. And the more times you do it, the better and better you get over time. And then if you're wrong, you have to ask yourself, what could I have seen that I missed? So let's say we trade down into yesterday's high, which we're doing right now, and the market fails. It breaks through the low and we get that push down into here, okay? To get that long liquidation of these longs up here. Let's say that happens. And then you're sitting there going, well, I lost money. I was wrong on this trade. Well, then you ask yourself, why was I wrong? What was it? I thought this was going to act as support. What was it that was wrong? And in this case, it would be that liquidation of the people going long up in here. You know what I'm saying? So every time you ask yourself those questions, you challenge yourself to understand the market, you will get better and better at reading the market. And then eventually the trades just come to you. You're just kind of watching how the market moves and you're like, yep, buying that, selling that. Takes time though. Speaking of which, is this support going to hold? holding for the moment. John Q. Jim Dalton says he was using it for real estate. Yeah, he wasn't using the software. He was hand drawing. <laughs> he was hand drawing this stuff out for years. Not not even just the re real estate markets. I mean, he did it with the market. He would look at one of these charts at the end of every day. Okay. And he would look at the price levels where the 30 minute highs and lows were. And he would draw on graph paper, a, 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 and he would fill it in himself. Uh, that's how old school he is. Paper and pen. Okay, so we, we dropped down into this support and we were able to get the ticks to push back up to the zero line, but then they rejected back down. So that's a sign that there aren't enough new buyers stepping in here. So I bet it breaks this time around and we get a push lower. Feeling bearish here. I'm not going to change the banner unless we break that A period low. But as soon as we do, I expect we're going to head down towards this 40. There you go. Bearish. I think we're heading down towards this uh, 43.59 level. 43.60 level.
Amir, I wonder if the CME crypto futures is indicative of the overall volume among all the crypto exchanges. That's another great point. One tricky thing about crypto is that it's the volume isn't consistent. So that is a great point. All right, so now we're testing what was support, right? The support we had at yesterday's high that got us up here to the B period high. We're now testing that as resistance. Support becoming resistance is a little bit bearish. Okay, so breaking out of the initial balance to the downside, we are technically one time framing lower here. Not that I think it's going to be a super strong trend. I think we're going to pull into range and find some support. But for the moment. <laughs> Donkey. Sorry, bro. Didn't see your didn't see your message. Uh, too high up on the comments. Uh, MK, what are you looking to switch to bearish or bullish again? So to get me to bullish now, they pretty much can't right now that we're trending lower and we have low volume, and we have slow tempo, they're not going to get me bullish again unless they get up above this A period high. Then maybe, like if we get above this volume node, come back down and find some support, maybe I'd be bullish. But from here on out, it's probably either going to be bearish or neutral. Neutral means I think it's going to go up and down. Bearish means I think it's going down. Uh, but if you want to know what would get me neutral, uh, getting above half back at this point would get me neutral. Trading Donkey, how's it looking, boys? It's looking boring is how it's looking. Boring AF. David, do I look at pivot points? I do not. But I would be happy to point you in the direction of Salmon River, who loves him, his daily pivots. Uh, they sometimes line up with market profile references, but not always. And no, that's nothing I've ever looked at, but uh, it does shock me how often he mentions that we reversed right at one of those pivots. David, we have so much information at our fingertips via the blockchain. Who's to say people aren't already exploiting it? They are. <laughs> have you not noticed that the crypto market is completely manipulated? Uh, that is all that market is. It's just controlled burns, man.
MW, I think there's an overnight single print. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of overnight single prints right in here between 4371 and 4381. I don't pay much attention to those. Um, here, no, the futures contracts, that volume won't come up um, on a blockchain. Um, so, no, those would be separate for sure. And even the blockchain you can't use for volume because a lot of the transactions are off chain, right? When you use a, a um, uh, man, I'm having a brain fart. When you use like Coinbase or one of those exchanges, um, they're just exchanging Bitcoin on, like not on chain. They're just exchanging their own Bitcoin. So none of those transactions would show up on the blockchain. Trading Donkey Charles, I'm sure. Please don't put up that bearish banner. It's up, dude. It's up. The pirate is a bear. Although same as this morning, I thought when we dipped below yesterday's high this morning, it would cause a massive sell off and we just slowly built support. We're doing it again. Gotta love these retail traders. They love to get squeezed. I do still think we're pushing down here, though, towards the overnight POC. What would the numbers be on a two-day balance? Great question. I would use yesterday's high pretty much as like a balancing area high. Um, we don't know yet where the low is. So that's what we could get today. If, if, if we do start to sell off down here we, and we create a low and then rotate back up, then we'll know where the low is. But I'm not exactly sure yet. More data is required. But I would say the high is going to be 4404-ish. Lahab is long here, long here, and long here. Uh, Harry notes YouTube as well. It's just a private stream on YouTube for the paid membership. Trading Donkey, probably just a holding pattern until two. Yep. When the deep pockets start to play again. Uh, David V, you were thinking that those pivots might line up with the portent level. Sometimes they do, but not always. Um, but yeah, every now and then they perfectly line up with something. CCT, you can't trade on Window Trader. You can just look at it. Um, I trade on Trading View. All right, guys. Well, with that, I'm going to bid you all farewell. I didn't even realize we were this far past uh, 1030. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm going to bounce now and go to the private stream, but I'll be back here live on the public YouTube at 2 p.m. to watch whatever chaos ensues with all of you. 
So if you want to come back and hang out at two, please do. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Uh, and the beep, the color differentiation on the volume, the dark red, that is the highest 30% of volume. The pink is the middle 40% and the white is the lowest 30. And it's the same thing for the overnight dark blue, highest 30, light blue, middle 40, white, lowest 30. All right, guys. See you next time.